Hello everyone, this is Tabata. Uh, I'm here with Gigi. Uh, my name is Giselle Yamamoto, but I go by Gigi. Um, I'm 17. I live in Oakland, California. I started getting into soccer when I was pretty little. You know, we were going through photo albums and there's a picture of me playing when I was like two or three, you know. Um, but soccer's always been a huge influence in my life. Um, my dad my dad played semi-professionally in Brazil. Let's go back a little bit before when you have the first contact with soccer, Brazilian soccer coaches uh, and on, on the camp, on the futsal camp. Yep. What did you expect and then how was the actual experience for you? Sure. So going, uh, going to the futsal camp, I didn't have a lot of expectations, you know, I was, I didn't play high school season so that had been my first like like contact play in a while so I was like really excited right um and then once I got to the camp being able to play with Hosanna and under and for um Anon Franklin right and then Mauro, Mauro. Mm -hmm. yep and then with you obviously and with everybody else was it was really amazing you know because I'd never I'd never played with that like high level of a player you know and with the with those like high level coaches either you know um or coaches who have coached at that level you know um so that was like totally different you know that was it was really really interesting and it was very clear very quickly um what i needed to work on you okay. know in terms of my game um but it was also like it was also the most fun i had had playing soccer in like probably six to eight months before that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have any, ex any expectations going into the camp or going into my Brazil trip. Um, I, well, that's not true. I expected myself to work really, really hard um, in the seven weeks that I was in Brazil, but in terms of being called or recruited or where I would play, I had no expectations about that, you know? Um, and the actual experience, the actual experience was, was crazy. It was amazing and it was crazy and it was, it was a lot, you know? So week one, we got there. I had like two days to adjust and I was jet lagged for like one of them, for both of them. And then I went and did the, um, uh, Pineda for the, Sam, uh, the Fero San Paulista mm -hmm. and I did the first day and then that was great and I had so much fun I made so many friends who I'm like still in contact with and then I ended up yeah and I had a great time playing you know and it was crazy playing in front of like in front of like the clubs that I had been watching on TV you know my entire life um, and then I actually ended up going back or I ended up talking to Alini uh, Pellegrino, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and and I asked her if I could come back for the second day, right? Because and and she was like, yes, absolutely, right? And so I ended up going back for day two and doing the same thing, you know, met, met a bunch of people, played played pretty well, you know, and um, had a really good time, like playing. Um, in front of all the coaches, you know? And then I didn't end up going the third day, but of course that was the day that Cristiani and Andresa, Andresa was there. Yep, uh -huh. were there. Yep, and so that was kind of disappointing. But <laughs> um, just to explain for who's watching, um, after the camp, we start to work on the possibility for you to go to, yep. to Brazil and to have that pilot project going on where she would experience a, bit, a little bit about the the style of training and actually the regular practice and preparation and everything mm -hmm. for tournaments, okay? So first of all, she got there and then you have two days for Panera. Mm -hmm. for the Pan Panera is kind of a tryout, if you're not wrong. Mm -hmm. So a bunch of clubs, they are just beginning uh, recruit girls for 17, 16, 17, actually 14 to 17 years old. I think so. Right? Yeah. yeah. So as that also was a new experience for Brazil. It's just the way they are starting to build the new generation, right? Because unfortunately, it's you kind of have some teams, but they are older, not exactly for what we call the base. Like base the, categories, yeah. Yeah. And she was explaining a little bit about the the first and second day. How do you see the coaches and the structure? How how mm -hmm. how did you feel about that? I mean, it was really well organized. Um, Alini did Alini, the woman who coordinated the whole the all three days of the Panetta. Um, she did a really really good job. It was super well organized and um, yeah. I mean, structure wise, I mean, it was 
you know, you get there, you warm up a little bit by yourself, and then you start on time, you know, and then you, you go and play. There's some warm-up drills, some technical drills, there's small side games, and then there was a bigger, like, half-field game. Um, was there any difference between here and there? I mean, there was definitely less girls at the Pineda than I thought there was going to be. Okay. Here, when you go to a tryout, it depends what team you, like, try out for. But, like, my first year of Bay Oaks tryouts, there were a lot of girls. There was a lot of girls over, like, three or four days. Like, how many spaces, like? How many would be true? Um, so it's a team of like 18 and they already, maybe like three or four. Okay, maybe really? Three or four. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then, um, and then the following week, I, I went to train with the Santos U18 team mm -hmm. and I did, and that was amazing, you know, because they were, they were number one in, in like, Sao Paulo at the time, right? Sao Paulo State, and yeah, that was, that was crazy. They were all, like, my age or a little bit younger, and they were, like, a really phenomenal team, you know? Uh, a lot of, a lot of raw talent there, you know? Um, and then, and then it happened, or it happened so they were going to a tournament, so I wasn't able to train with them for the, for the rest of my time there, like, uh, like what was planned. So I went and did the Sao Paulo Pineda, mm -hmm. and that was crazy too. And I actually ended up getting called after the first phase to go on the second phase, which happened a couple weeks later. And then from the second phase, I ended up getting called to do the third phase, which only five girls of the 600 plus were called. Um, so that was really incredible, you know, and um, yeah, that was, it was the third phase. We actually got to like, it was like a practice. And we got to trade with the team. And yeah, I mean, I could definitely see how, I mean, how like advanced or like soccer, um, like foot skills are, you know? And um, yeah, and I definitely, yeah, it, it was really fun. It was great. And I love, I love the coach from Santos and Sao Paulo, but I got to spend a little bit more time with the Sao Paulo coach, you know? Um, yeah, and then, but I mean, after the first phase of Sao Paulo tryouts, I ended up watching, I went to go watch um, Clovia Atletico Juventus play, their professional women's team, which it was crazy. I had never seen a training like that in my life, you know, and I've gone to see um, a couple college teams practice. I've played with some of the girls from college teams, you know, mm -hmm. um, here in the U.S. And obviously I played for like a club team. I played for Cal Magic and I played for Bay Oaks, you know, but I had never seen a training like that. Um, okay. And then you got the opportunity to practice with... Uh like regular base for yep. a club that was yep. Juventus, one of those biggest clubs in Brazil as well, especially in Sao Paulo. And how was that? Like, because this was more the daily yeah. life, right? For yeah. A, for a player, for mm -hmm. a, who wants to be like professional soccer player. Yeah. I mean, it was incredible. It was like, it was the best soccer experience I've ever had in my life, you know, and I only trained with them for like four and a half, five weeks. And I, I was super lucky to have done so, you know, I was super, super fortunate, and it's such, well, like, what a rare opportunity, you know, like, I don't know anybody else who's done what I've done, you know, and I've never grown so much as a person and as a player um, than I did in those five weeks, and um, I mean, the biggest difference between, like, the soccer I'm playing now in the U.S. and the soccer and the soccer that I played um, with Juventus is well, one, the girls were, like, pr like older than I was, you know, like, a couple years, so like, eight years older than me, um, and obviously, like, there's a the language, but, like, the girls in Brazil just want it so badly, you know, there's so mm. much passion, there's so much drive, um, and they're all really good on the ball, you know, all of them are, like, exceptional players on the ball, you know, um, and so, that, like, technical, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, technically, and in terms, and, like, and when you have that kind of skill in all of your players, you don't have to coach the basics anymore at that age. You know, you just coach coach tactics, you coach how you want to play, you know, you coach formations and, you know, combination plays, but it's not, none of their drills are like, okay, like, let's learn how to pass the ball, you know, which was, which was a huge difference for me, you know, because um, playing in the U.S., 
I some of our drills are still like let's like learn how to like pass and trap the ball, you know. Okay. Um, Even nine years practice already. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, and I think living like going to practice five days a week, you know, was a lot on my body. You know, I remember after two weeks, I was like so tired. I was. I was so tired, you know, but I really love the game, you know, and I, and th I mean, that's what I want to do, you know, if I can, that's what I want to do, you know, I want to play soccer every day, you know, and I want to get, I want to get beat up every day, you know, right. um, but it like, you know, it's, it, it was my passion and, you know, and my parents support, you know, that really, really drove me to keep going, you know, and I'm, I'm really, really glad that I did because I, I mean, I made a lot of friends, you know, too, you know, and, and that team, it really felt like a family, you know, and, and they pushed me really, really hard as a person, you know, but, or as an, as a player, and then as people, they were super nice, very welcoming, you know, really kind, very patient with me, <laughs> um, and the coaching staff was just incredible, you know, Wellington, Felipe, uh, Leonardo, Marcelo, uh, Oh, I'm, not, I'm blanking on his name. <laughs> oh my god, this is so embarrassing. Um, I will the name will come, no worries. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but the, <laughs> yeah, but the coaching staff at Juventus was just absolutely amazing. They were, they were also super welcoming, very patient with me, you know, but they really pushed me. They treated me like one of the players, you yes. know, and it was, it was, it was very intense, you know, but it was, it was so worth it, you know, and I'm super, super excited to go back. Yeah, we that's one of those you, you said about the physical aspect, and one of those things that we are discussing before, even if the coaches, but if your dad as well, mm -hmm. because we knew the difference about the intensity. Mm -hmm. And then over there, as I said, like five days a week, and all the but we definitely knew you, you will get it mm -hmm. because just the matters of you want to do it and mm -hmm. then doing often, like mm -hmm. everybody get adapted. So when about the instruction, about the, the training as well, like mm -hmm. how, how, how different was that? So I, I, um, in the US, my coach is actually Brazilian. Um, and so I had seen some of the drills that I did with Juventus there, you know, um, here and um, but the, I mean, the biggest difference was just like how fast the ball moves, how, how strong the girls are, you know, how it's really, it was really just the pace of everything. You know, they run faster, they play faster, they pass faster, they dribble faster, you know, they shoot faster, you know, everything. It was just the pace, you know, so I didn't, there was definitely some drills that were like super complicated that like it took me a while to understand, okay. but for the most part, it was just, it was just the speed of the game that was the biggest difference. And for someone who's been playing at kind of like the same speed like my entire life, you know, and like I play when I play with adults, the game gets faster, you know, but I had never played at, at that speed for that long, you know, mm -hmm. so it, it took a little bit of adjusting, you know, but um, maybe two weeks into the trip, I started feeling, I started feeling I was finally getting it, you know, and then by the end of the trip, I really felt like, like I was yeah. there, you know, yes, yes, yeah, yes, I was yes. there, I was like, I was really part of it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Another question uh, about the physical training that mm -hmm. some some clubs, some coaches like to do together mm -hmm. with the technical or the mm -hmm. practical aspects. Did you experience that? How was yeah. that for you? Yeah, so I mean, every day at training, there it was basically broken up into four parts. It was a two-hour training. First part would be warm-up. Second part would be um, some sort of small-sided, smaller drill kind of activity. And the third would be a like bigger scrimmagey thing or fitness, and then the fourth would be a, like a full field scrimmage. Um, how many hours? Two. two. So for the most, yeah, for the most part, that's how it's set up. So every day, and the thing is, like, they could have taken out the the half hour of fitness that they did every day, and everything is just so fast, and you run so much that like you almost don't need the fitness, you know. But it's but then again, it's that half hour of fitness that, that makes them professionals, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's the biggest difference, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and so, so yeah, there was definitely, there were days where the fitness was like, all right, get a partner. You're going to run 10 meters, jog back 10 meters, and you're going to like sprint this you're for like five minutes and you're going to do 15 or 20 meters and then you're going to do 30 meters, you know? So it was, 
No, I'm stopping. There was that kind of fitness, and then there was also the kind of fitness like, oh, you're not playing, just go run around the field. And then there was the fitness within the drills that was like, uh, it was like a uh, 6v4 rondo. And if you did, if you lost the ball, or it was like a 6v4 keep away. And then if you lost the ball or didn't win the ball, you had to go. Or if the other team completed a certain amount of passes, you had to go run around to come, come back and, def- and keep defending, you know? So that was crazy. That drill was the drill that got me in shape. Okay. Um, yeah, I hated that drill, but it's like <laughs> the best drill I've ever done in my life. Um, yeah, and... Is training, did you do it together? Or yeah, not? yeah, so we did, we spent a couple days in the gym, um, and so those would be like hour, hour and a half trainings, um, and those mostly happened after games. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did like strength and conditioning, you know, we ran on the treadmill for like a half hour at different intervals, you know, so you'd run a minute and a half slowly, minute and a half fast, you know, minute and a half slowly, minute and a half fast, and then you did um, strength, um, a lot of upper body strengthening, and then um, they took really good care of their body, so there was like stretching after that too. How were you stretching? Uh, just right. after after our gym days. Okay. Um, yeah. And about the coach style, what do you what do you can say? Well, I mean, I played for a Brazilian coach, so it was very similar. Yeah, like it was okay. a lot of like similar, <coughs> excuse me, um, points and a lot of similar tactics and emphasis emphases on certain things. Um, so it wasn't the ta- in terms of tactics, it wasn't anything new. Mm-hmm. You know, it was more just applying what I knew at ten times the speed. Okay. So that made the yeah. Cool. So that that was hard. <laughs> um, yeah. And about the players that work with you, like the the girls, mm-hmm. how do you see the style or the mentality? Mm-hmm. It, what any aspect that you could see different between Americans and Brazilians? I mean, there's so many differences. Um, I think. I mean, like I said, the biggest difference between the girls that I play with in the U.S. and the girls I played with in Brazil is just how much they want it, you know. there's a, It's a different level of passion and drive and motivation, you know, and it's all internal, you know, and soccer is not like a, an activity you do. It's like a lifestyle, you know. Everything revolves around soccer, you know, your job, your, your schooling, you know, everything revolves around what time practice is, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you can and you can see that how that translates into the girls games you know they they just want it so much more i think you know and i think i think in the u.s there are definitely girls that want it you know but soccer is a much more common thing to do you know it's an activity that your parents put you in after school mm-hmm. you know from like three to five, three to four thirty you know every day when you're little you know whereas in Brazil, you don't start playing for a club until you're like 15. Mm-hmm. You know, if you fortunately, if, yeah, yeah, if you're good enough, you know, um, you know, so it's much more of like a precious thing, you know, it's much more, they, they really care, you know, and I think, I think in the US, there's, there's talent too, you know, I think there's drive too, but you know, you don't play soccer in Brazil just to play soccer, you know, it's, it's for real. Yeah, and it's also like embedded in the culture too, you know, like, Brazilian culture is soccer, you know, and soccer is Brazilian culture, you know, or it's at least a huge part of it, you know, whereas in the U.S. it's like a, it's like a fun activity, you know, and that's probably been the biggest difference for me coming back. It's after playing with girls who, who really, really want it, you know, and, 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 and are willing to work super hard for what they want. Coming back to the U.S., it's been it's been a it's been a big change, you know. It's just a different mentality. Right, right. And about the way to read the game, could you see any difference or you know, um, or even about like uh, dribbling or shooting or yeah. could you see some difference or not? No, no, no. Um, in Brazil, I mean, it's a much more like technical game. You know, there's a lot more dribbling just to dribble, you know, not really because like, well, th- all, no, that's not true. All the dribbles were like out of necessity, you know, but it's also, it's a much more like fluid game, you know, the, it's, in my opinion, it's a prettier game, you know, I think, I think Brazilian soccer is a, just a prettier style of game, you know, it's, it's just as physical as American soccer, but it's, the point of the game is to be physical, you know, the point of the game is to, my dad tells me this, but the point of the game is to like humiliate your friend, you know? It's like, how badly can you <laughs> humiliate <laughs> the person, you know? So, and I think, whereas I feel like in the US, sometimes the, 
the point of the game is like how hard can you hit the other person you know and like i get the short end of that stick a lot um when i played in the us but yeah in, in terms of like reading the game like i said the tactics didn't change a whole lot because i play for a brazilian coach mm -hmm. but when i played for bay oaks which is a very like i had like two american coaches or three american coaches while i was there it was it was a lot more like let's send the ball forward and have someone run and go get it rather than let's like let's build and let's work and let's dribble to get there as a team you know it was much more like how fast are you you know how hard can you hit the other person <laughs> if you could see from from the future mm -hmm. uh, what is your expectation after that experience that you have in brazil what do you mm -hmm. have in mind what's driving you now yeah well, I really, really want to go back. You know, I want to keep playing, and I want to, I want to see where, where, where this can go. You know, I, I think there's a lot of opportunity for me in Brazil, and I think um, in terms of game style, tactics, technical vision. You know, I think, I think I fit in pretty well over there, and I would love to see um, where it goes. You know, so I think going back is. It's definitely a priority for me at this right now so like we're trying to figure that out and um just really being able to explore and take advantage of every opportunity that's given to me um and really live all of it to the fullest great that was pretty much our idea yeah. to expose you uh in an environment that could help you to develop as much you could mm -hmm. and you did so well actually i heard so many good things about you <laughs> I knew that. I knew that you would come, and hopefully, you can come back. Mm -hmm. And we are here also to support you any way that we can. Thank you. And any other consideration? I mean, I think if you're looking to do this program, it's a hundred percent worth it, and it's it was really like the best experience in my life. And I don't say that lightly. I don't say that about anything. <laughs> you know, it really. It was really the opportunity of a lifetime, and I I grew so much, and um, yeah, I mean, I've got yeah, I it, I have so many good memories, you know, and I have yeah, I I grew so much. I can't even like put it into words. It was it was a really incredible opportunity. So thank you for everything that you've done. You're welcome. Okay, thank you for being like brave because we are in another environment, yeah. expose a different type of style of game. You're we can say like that this expression say you're putting the fire like yeah. figure it out and you did so well and Thank then you. definitely it comes with your what you want mm -hmm. and we can see and that yeah. was the reason we can okay let's do it Gigi because yeah. we know we, she really wants it. Mm -hmm. okay.